the guns, I mean the Lunox. The Lunox. It was banned in a series, I believe, earlier today or yesterday. Uh, the, Whoa! The details kind of just uh, blur together. But look at this, Ogwin asserting himself between JP and Sanji. Interesting. Uh, TLPH adjust based on what happened in game one. Mm -hmm. And Falcons AP Bren, they're just keeping up the pace because look at the damage that they're capable of early on. Oh, the folks coming in from both of these teams, but Ogwin suffering the damage coming in from... Oh, look at that. JP has to walk away here. Now, the interesting thing about these two teams is when push comes to shove, they manage to uh, pick something out of the ordinary. Yesterday, it was Falcons AP Bren with the Lolita Hanabi. This time, it's TLPH with the Lunox. It's always the gold laners, Benny and Super Marco. Yeah, look at this. Not just that, even the XP Ruby. We don't see that very often anymore. So with that adjustment, it looks like TLPH are really hedging on these theories, hedging on these principles that will allow for them to get a fast one over Falcons AP Bren, put us at sudden death. Let's talk about the gold lane matchup you already mentioned, uh, the Lunox versus the Harith, Benny Cutie versus Super Marco. If anything, in theory, wait, uh -huh. whoop, whoop, whoop. all right, in theory, isn't the Lunox more like a bulletproof hero? Wouldn't that be good on Marco? Yeah, especially if you have the Brilliance ready to be expended. Assuming, uh, assuming there's also no catch coming in from the members of TLPH. But of course, uh, like uh, the usual uh, games, no action will entail here in the gold lane as the uh, turtle spawns here at the top lane. Okay, a while ago, it was Flap TZ. Got the first turtle, he I believe, in game one. number one. Yeah, he stole one. Yeah. Let's see time. if we can do it here. Kyle oh, Gwen! Coming in, the implosion by Owen and the knock up the Tempest of Blades 2, popping Sanford real quick. The answer by JP, the glorious pathway. Owen falls. JP now taken out by Flap TZ. The turtle still standing down to a tenth of its health. Oh, the retribution by Kyle. TLPH walking away. Falcons claim two bodies plus the turtle. And again, a heads up play coming in from Owen with the implosion flicker play, catching to off guard. Now, TLPH, you're in the position right now that you don't want. Because again, you have a Lunox, you have a Hayabusa. Ideally, you'd really want to control the early game, especially if you have uh, JP with the Hylos. But again, one, once it reaches the nine minute mark, once Hylos has those tanky items, for sure, this at uh, the tides could turn in favor of the cavalry. For sure. JP intercepting Ogwen, now laying down a glorious pathway. Picture perfect. Like, this is one of the best angled. Glorious Pathways I've seen in a while. If that happened during a team fight, yeah. that would have been a win for Team Liquid yeah, uh, PH. Honestly, I think it's a more of an aesthetic, right? Aesthetic kind of vibe. No, even efficient, <laughs> even even efficiency wise. Like you try to cross the, your way out and retreat yeah. underneath your turret, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, and you, you can't cross uh, you can't cross uh, walls with a second skill from um, Tigreal, by the way. Mm. So that's really an efficient Glorious Pathway. But again, the problem remains for TLPH. Again, F Cap establishing an early lead here. Kyle TC freely roaming here with the Ling. Just like game number one. But the good part is Carl TZ, 1-0-0 with the Hayabusa. Compared to the Nolan game, he had a rough start. Yep. I believe he was 1-2-2. Early pickup of the Sky Piercer. So this time, TLPH can actually manage everything. But that is in perspective, because look at what Carl TZ is doing. His combat, uh, rather his map mobility, rotational speed is so much higher. He's at level eight. Now we have a fender on the flap TZ. Maybe forcing out. I don't know. Primal Wrath, he's going 3v1. How long has he been going for this? Forcing out the Ugi Shadow Kill and eventually falls down. What? That took, what, oh, almost 10 seconds? Three, 10 seconds and three ultimates from TLPH. But still, that was a worth it trade because they got a kill onto the XP laner. And as the turtle will spawn in 10 seconds, Falcon's AP Bren a while ago, the reason why they got the first turtle was the mid bush control. Owen was there, ready to expand the implosion plus the flicker play. And with the flicker uh, available, they can actually do it again. All right, luckily, FlapDZ has spawned in time to contest for the second turtle. Now they're deep into the pit. Mind you, Carl DZ already picked up his Hunter Strike, so he's playing with two. Oh, again! Motion by Ogwin! And they push out the Sacred Hammer, down goes 40. JP laying down the glorious pathway. JP's in trouble. Tempest of Blades up by Kyle. Taking down one. Carl DZ, though, in the chaos! Steals away the turtle, and now he goes in. Shadow kill here, serving up a kill. The flap TZ, but he gets taken out on the way out by Kyle. Whoa! And now Sanji, looking for a quick double. Not so fast, says F Cap. They get the second kill there. 
but TLPH gets a turtle. Sanji almost got a major outplay over two members of Falcons AP Bren. But looking at what happened, uh, Falcons got uh, three kills plus no, Carl Teasy got the turret though. He did. But in this case, you can clearly see Ogwen is the main driving force of the Falcons. Again, the implosion flicker play. We were just mentioning that he could do it again. He literally did it again. This time connecting onto Sanji. But a good answer also from Sanji because the frigid glacier is like the signal for TLPH though. We can go in again. We can re-engage. Re yeah. So best believe once Sanji gets a couple more core items, it'll be worse for FCAP. It won't yeah. be so easily just because Ogwen found the angle, yeah. they can go in. So yeah. now, I think it's a matter of uh, TLPH biding their time. They have to understand that they can't keep forcing these engagements just because of the promise of a mid-game power spike. They have to still make it there. Yeah, and Ogwen right now, six minutes in, picks up his Athena shield, so you can expect more aggressive plays coming in from the Roamer of Falcons AB Bread as they also have a 2.4k gold lead. Oh, oh look at this. JP. All right, plain for tease. Jose, did you see that? Uh, just off camera, pushed by Flap, the first turret. First turret onto the top lane? Yeah, they left him alone. Yeah, uh, look, see? Now, now Carl has to deal with that. Okay, okay, okay. And bottom two, look at this! Another split push from Falcons, AP Brown. This is... This wow! Is the same... A little bit of a change, again, in pacing, but just story-wise, early to mid, FCAP has better map control. Earlier it was because of the low E, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's because of just faster rotational speed. Yeah, good wave management. Uh, again, distractions made by the mid trio of Falcon Day. Apart from Kyle Tizi, of course. He's the one split pushing. But okay, the last turtle has spawned. One for one. Kyle has one. Carl has one. This time, both teams can contest. Pixel Brush checked in. It's free. Flap Tizi walks in. A nuke by Sanji. Clearing the presence. Small advantage for Team Liquid PH. Turtle oh, slightly placed on their side. Oh, Gwen coming in, catches one. It's just JP. Still looking for a good implosion. Turtle gets reset. Okay, Vital Spell still available for both of these teams. It's a matter of who's going to set first. Glorious Pathway is there. Oh, and Gwen! The implosion, the answer back, plus the EG. Turtle gets taken down by Carl Deasy, but where's the damage? There it is on Ogwen. So we have a kill to Benny Cutie. JP falls, one for one, Roamer for Rome. And now they back off. Okay, okay, for TOPH, that's a good sign. This time, no extra additional casualties with Carl Teasy. Just making sure, keeping FCAP in check. Go goes in alongside Sanford there. But again, looking at the trade, one for one, Roamer for Roamer. Carl Teasy securing it with a good retribution that steal. Ooh. And looking at the items right now. Yeah, I got my eyes on Sanji. Check it out, man. His first big item is mm -hmm. the glowing wand. Yeah. So he would rather punish Ogwin and Flap for, you know, maybe pushing too much forward. Yeah. And then eventually he'll start bi building the uh, big boy yeah. magic items. And I actually uh, saw that uh, Benny Cutie on the other, but wait. Again. Oh, here we go. Sagi's in trouble. Drops the ult, but trades out for a few first. 40's down. Count he gets a double. JP's up next. Tripping up on five members of FCAP. Three for one. That was actually a good frigid glacier coming in from Sanji, but the problem is Falcons AP Bren. They have the mobility, they have the sustain. Counter attack always on point and they're not yet done. As Kyle Teasy working on the orange buff here of Carl Teasy, not quite sure who got it. He stole it away, I he think. He stole it away. He stole it away, he stole it away, he stole it away now. And now they're working on the middle lane turret here. And they're able to push it. Okay. One more from the ballista. Ooh. One more. Just Literally one more. One more Just one more. Uno mas. <laughs> and now Falcons AP Bren at 3.5k gold lead. So far, so good. They can out-sustain the Frigid Glacier. Even if Sanji places it right on target with three members, they can still outplay uh, TLPH. Definitely helps now that there's a winner card on few. And yeah. Marco, I think, just had to click the Purify once all game. Yeah. Again, Bulletproof. Shades of game number three yesterday where he has an Aegis with uh, Hanabi, but I think... I, Rarely I, had to press it. I, I didn't even think that he pressed it once. Uh, talking about last night's game, we saw a lot of blood wings now on Benny Cutie. So he knows that he's a prime target as well. He knows that Kyle Tizi might go for him. Yeah, yeah. Right now, TLPH really looking for that momentum, really looking for an opening here. And again, Carl Tizi with the last two neutral objective takedowns. Still believe he's confident enough to steal this away from Kyle TZ. But FCAP again has the high ground here onto the Lord Pit. Flap TZ zoning out the members of TLPH. 
as they start things off with the Lord. But look at that position of Kyle Kizia. You can see a play coming in from Owen. He oh. has the flicker though. Coming in. Spots him in that fence bush, and now 40 reclaiming back a little bit of ground for Team Liquid PH. Because of the whole Lord Shuffle, Benny Cutie was able to take care of that long lane and then come back and join in. Still managing the waves again, one of the best split pushers, backdoor enders of MLBB, Benny Cutie. He knows how to manage this, uh, the, the lanes. So TOPH still confident enough that they can contest for this Lord, but again, Ogwin, they have the battle spells. 2-4-2 two, two so far for the Roamer of Falcons AP Bren in terms of flicker implosion plays. And now, few Super Marco. This is the patient game again. The patience of both of these two teams in full display. The land of dawn is really quiet, Leo. It's really quiet. The tension is building. And look at this. Because of how unsure both teams are of being able to take this major objective, they would rather play the bushes. Look at this. Look at this. Flap is crossing over. But again, Flap the advantage. Is, I mean, they know now at, at this point, you know? But again, the advantage of the Ling. You can clearly see it. And he can join in quickly. Look at this, the push! Look at this, Kyle TZ again, working on the bottom lane. Just one more turret out of the base. That's up top. And that's up top. Falcons AB Bren still making the most out of the patient game. Two mid still standing. Okay, okay. Still has an outer turret uh, in the middle lane and also the top lane. But again, this is where Open loves the position when he's the Tigreal. The mid lane brush. Again, he has the flicker. He has the implosion as Kyle T Z picks oh. up a BOD. Yes, it hurts. I mean, I'm just thinking about it, it hurts. Yeah, as the game progresses, Falcons AP Bren's lead just keeps on going and going, getting bigger. Now 4.5k. Lord Shuffle engaged. JP and Flap TZ, the frontliners. Ogwen, Ogwen going for the conceal. Spotted by Sanford. Cancelled out. The implosion preemptively used. Flap TZ now at less than half health. Can he press the Primal Wrath? He's already in it. The glorious pathway. The retreat. Back. Back aboard, says Team Liquid PH. As they play actually. with the range. 40 and Sanji. Got to be sent back home while FCAP stand their ground. Oh, this is an opportunity for Falcons AP Brent to burst down the Lord. But again, Kyle Tz working on the mind games, working on the macro. He wants someone from TLPH, specifically Benny Cutie, to work on the minions as they try to take this first Lord away. It's not as free. It's not as free unless they know where Benny Cutie is. It's never free. Okay, but he's gonna work on first his purple buff. Ooh, Car Carl just picked up the Malefic Roar, okay. so he's about maybe a half step behind. Uh, half a shadow. Kyle now, but. <laughs> You know what? I can't say that because Kyle is at about 11, 12k. Yeah. Carl is barely past eight. Yeah, but again, this is still Carl TZ. Still go for the steal, but Ogwen! And here we go. The Glorious Pathway let in, but look at the back line. Sending away Kyle TZ. Down goes 40 and JP. Not a single soul taken out of Falcons AP Bren. And this is a clear go signal for Falcons to secure the Lord. A third consecutive flicker implosion play. From Ogwin. He is the inevitable. Same spot, the Thanos of this game. A literal titan as they work on the middle lane turret. And now TLPH not looking good for the cavalry. There's not many factors that could have changed Ogwin's approach. Sure, you could dodge him via bushes. Sure, you could outnumber him. But at the end of the day, as long as the approach remains the same, you can't change the results. He was going to get away with it. And... Amidst, uh, amidst of it all, look at Super Marco's battle spell. Has yet to be pressed. No, just, wow. It's still deathless. It's still deathless. Same with Benny Cutie, though, so they can hold on to that. But up up to what point? Up to what point can you say Benny not dying is oh. a good thing? Lord. There's a Lord down bottom. He's going to crash into that inhibitor. Down to less than half health. TLPH is going to stare at their inhibitor and get taken down. Oh, JP. And well for one. JP. JP will be able to drop his ult but will go down himself as Falcons AP Bren get their eyes onto the next objective here. God. The orange buff, the turret in mid, and now the purple. Oh no, they're gonna start taking it away from Carl. Oh, depriving Carl TZ, the young goat of necessary resources to come back from this 9.5k gold deficit. The much needed purple. But look at Ogwin, what a heads up play. As soon as the glorious pathway was casted, Casting the implosion, making sure that the horse, the half man, half horse can't go away. But a conceal play coming in for Falcons. Looking for the range. Let's go. It was just a feint, Egan. It was just a feint. They were forcing Team Liquid to respond. And best believe if TLPH did respond, yeah. that's maybe when Marco would have dropped the Purify, dropped the Zaman Force, and danced.
But right now, TOPH really having a hard time. Okay, Falcons AP Brand with that concealed play was able to get down the inhibitor turret into the middle lane, leaving TOPH with one more turret. And looking at the turrets of Falcons AP Brand, they only lost one. And that's on the top lane. Just one. I'm looking at the gold lead here, 10,000. Half of that is between Kyle and Carl. There's literally two economic classes between these two junglers right now. Exactly. 5,000, that's like an item and a half for an assassin. Item and a half lead for Falcons AP Brin. Looking at the KDAs, you're not going to wonder why. Still deathless for Marco, still deathless for Kyle TZ. And now TOPH, they still could turn things around again. They have Sanford with the Ruby. Not the, not the usual role where you placed in Ruby, the XP lane. He has to build kind of tanky, which explains the dominant size. Yeah, but at the same time, I think TOPH kind of lacking damage because Sanji has the Bridge Glacier. It's always connecting to three, but for some reason, Falcon's AP Red, they're still able to sustain the damage given in by Falcon's Ogwen. Ogwen catches one, gets the flicker in, the revitalize and the glorious pathway. They take out his immortality and down he goes. Now look at the back line. Kyle TZ. Hero landing on the Benny Cutie. Down goes JP. The trade one for one. Tempest of Blades up. Can 40 survive? Back the answer on. is no. Marco gets two kills. Two kills for Ogwen. And they keep going. Carl TZ looking to wipe out. Looking to do some cleanup. Down goes Marco. Down goes Few. Carl TZ gets one. Benny Cutie traded out. Three for three. Now we have a game. After two games, Super Marco has fallen down. One death for the bulletproof Marco. A good counter attack from TOPH. And as I was saying that I thought they lacked damage, as long as Sanji's Rigid Glacier connects to at least three members, there is still hope for the Cavalry. And looking at Carl TZ, even if it was whoa. deprived of the buffs, 414 still wait, for the wait, Hayabusa. Wait, wait, wait. Look at this flap trying to stop Carl oh. from shenanigans. Lord here down to attend to the tail. The shadow kill by flap. JP. The glorious pathway. The Tempest of Blades. Oh no. Drop the shadows. Pop in Flap TZ Immortality. Does not have a primal wrath. The implosion by Ogwin. Forcing away the rest of TLPH as Kyle TZ able to finch poise out. The Lord still stands. A lot of battle spells expended as well as ultimates. No casualties whatsoever as we approach the 18 minute mark. Woo! And just like the numerous, the countless series that these two teams have battled out. Wow, 8.15, but for some reason TLPH is still in the ball game. And they're actually poised to contest for this Lord. The cavalry keeps on coming. And look at this, JP's gonna dance. JP's gonna shuffle with Ogwin and Few. And for the first time in a while, look at this, 40 has control of the river bush. Pulls one on the flap, popping him. And then the glorious pathway. Ogwin! And now Ogwin with the answer, Carl Deasy's down. The shutdown by Marco. The double kill, JP's down. 40 as well. In Kyle's eyes. Benny, Benny, Kyle's Benny. Low. Benny gets two. Three for two, the trade out. Where's Kyle going? Kyle can smell blood, but he's also pretty low himself. Few. Sanji pushing him away from the walls. Nothing comes free, nothing comes close, nothing comes easy. Crucial. As Team Liquid PH get a winning trade. Crucial, brilliant play coming in from Benny Cutie as uh, El Capitan Few try to chase after him. And this is TOPH. This is how, this is how they swept Falcon's AP Brent, clinging on to every bit of hope that they have and looking at the instant replay, a beautiful setup from Ogwin, but the problem is they weren't able to sustain Benny Cutie. Look at the patience of Benny Cutie. He literally waited for the skills and to be expended before oh, entering the clash. Dude, that's his own version of the Benny Bomb with the Lunox. That's yes. the Benny Bomb if ever I've seen one. A push forward burst of magic in your face. And now the plan for Falcon's AP Bren is to work on the macro game once again. Kyle TZ oh, oh, oh. making sure that there's a slow push ensuing here in the bottom lane. Oh yeah. 3.5k gold lead so far. The it lead shrank. has been reduced. It shrank. It started. Down to a third. It was 10.6k a, a couple of minutes ago. Exactly. Now it's 3.5. Quick math. All right. So now we're approaching the 20 minute mark again. Way past the average of what a season 14 game would look like in MPL Philippines. Yeah, this is, this is an Omega game, a smart Omega game. <laughs> it's, it's approaching that point, yes. Well, this is the ultra late game now. And 
I think it's 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 just it's item perfection now. Because look, if you change one of his items into a DG. Okay, okay. Now Ogwen again. Ogwen's positioning on the same brushes. Woo! Whereas Flicker Implosion plays always connects, but JP starts things off with a glorious pathway. And there's the Lord skill knocking him up. Look at it, the Lord down off into his health. Ogwen! And there's a huge one from Sanji! And there's the old from Kyle, Tempest of Blaze Lord still standing. Down goes Kyle! Down goes Ogwin! Two free kills for Team Liquid PH as they score the Lord off of Sanji's cold hands. Another frigid Glacier play from the Aurora as they clear the minions from the middle lane and the bottom lane. You can hear the crowd in Green Sun Hotel making some noise. Because after a 10.6k gold lead, TLPH. Now on the driver's seat as they charge in the middle lane. For the first time in 21 minutes, for the first time in this whole series, Team Liquid PH are in control. Three men are gonna defend from FCAP. They're missing Ogwen, they're missing Kyle, and TLPH are in their base. Seven seconds before Kyle TZ and Ogwen shows up in a battlefield, but the problem remains for Falcons AP Bren. A Lord marching in the top. They have enhanced minions here. They have the setups. They could easily end this game and turn things around. JP goes in. Glorious pathway set in the answer. The EG, the dance by Super Marco. Zaman Force underneath is tier three in the top oh. lane. Down goes JP. Kyle. Down by Flop and Few. Tempest of Blaze by Kyle. Dancing around. Winner crown trigger by Sanji, but he gets taken out just as quickly. Carl TZ and Benny call it quits. They're out of here, look, but FCAP have lost two inhibitors. Look at the death timers in the lines of four. Oh, oh no, Falcons AP Brand, I think they're gonna work on the bottom lane and then eventually try to get the top lane inhibit their turret, but look at the play from Falcons AP Brand. The crowd in Green Zone Hotel, I wish I could give them my mic because everyone's screaming, even TOPH. The Cavaliers and the Bees, oh. ever as loud as they could be. All right, <laughs> something tells me this last Lord, this last Lord could be it, because FCAP, they're still missing two, TLPH missing three, and they're all gonna come off of death at about the same time. Okay, Leo, your call is a Lord. My call is a wipeout. I think it's not gonna end up with a Lord, a Lord kill here. I mean, it's gonna happen at the Lord. Yeah, yeah, at the Lord, yes, Both teams course. can't just turn a blind eye because a backdoor finish is just as possible for either. You're looking at Carl TZ on the Hayabusa and you're still looking at Benny Cutie. This man has pulled off backdoors all over the world. Anything is possible with Benny Cutie. Cambodia, Where Indonesia, else? Malaysia, anywhere and everywhere. Wherever you, gotta, you want. You gotta watch your base. Oh no. This. What else would you expect? I mean, TLPH Baka Safety Friends. <laughs> They've been duking it out for a majority of 2023 and 2024. Of course it's going to reach the 23-minute mark, Leo. And now, TLPH still has a 3.5k gold lead. This time, not depriving Carl TZ of the necessary buffs that they need. You got everything he needs, man. One inhibitor left for TLPH. All the other turrets of Falcon's AP friend for the bottom lane are still there, but they still have one inhibitor turret. <laughs> you have a virgin bottom lane. Yeah. <laughs> Just straight up, nothing can touch it. And look, I understand because TLPH is trying to clear that too. Because again, working off of inevitability is important in a matchup like this. Now, now for me, the question is, is it worth it for Ogwin to cast the implosion play first? Because Sanji always manages to counter no, no, attack no, no, with no, a frigid no, no, glacier. No, no, no. What's I the play say, here? I would say find the counter play. TLPH will always try to look for initiative, will always look for the tempo. Oh. If you're FCAP, find the counter wait, play. Wait, wait. I think there's a mystic because Sanford... Sanford flickered, yeah. Flickered in. Sanford flickered. I'd love to see the player camera, but no, it looks like it's all according to plan. He yeah. seems fine. Yeah, Falcons AP Bren, okay. They spotted out where Ogwen is hiding. So potential play coming in from behind is not possible anymore for Falcons AP Bren. Again, both of these teams will work the macro game again. Trying to establish a slow push. Try to make the opposing team react. It'd be outnumbered coming in to this potentially last Lord. The stakes are high for both of these teams. Falcons AP Bren winning game number one. They have the match point. And again, winning this game will give them a lot of confidence. These Titans, although we keep calling them Titans, they're still not on top of the leaderboards. So they need this win to establish themselves once again.
Kyle Deasy constantly working off of the long lane. This is tough for TLPH to respond to. It's not as easy for them to defend. And look at this, Kyle and Ogwen. Oh. The concealed play, taking control of these bushes. What are they thinking? I think they want to go for a push. Again, Kyle Deasy has the necessary damage to bring down into the turret up top. Oh, wow, chest like. Look at that, the stare down between JP and Flap. Okay. Neither of them are fighting, but they know that they're there. Yeah, and they also have immortalities. They also have their kits here. No, you move. You move. No, you yeah, move. It's like it's it's like you punch first. No, you do. You move. See? But, but I do agree with you that whoever punches first, I think, will lose. But Kyle T's working on the top lane. Oh, here wow, and they get look it. at that. It's possibly a free. Oh, Kyle T's! Kyle T's midair gets the shadow kill unpunished with impunity. That's goaded. What a goat move! Saves the inhibitor turret up top, evades the implosion of Ogwen, and now sets themselves up for a potential last Lord takedown. And here we go, the Glorious Pathway set in. Win the crown, foo by Flap TZ. And they are playing with range. Check the long lane, Super Marco, Lord here down to a fifth of its health. Retribution for Carl TZ off of cooldown. Who's gonna take it? Check that long lane, eyes on Marco, Turtle. Lord standing now down oh. to a tenth of its health. And that is CC. Sign on the 40. What's 40 doing? Where's he going? He's letting them push back. And look at Sanji. Sanji's going play? for a black black door himself. Down goes 40. Look at the Lord scored by Carl. And they reset the inhibitor up top. Finally falls. Oh, 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 with the crowd play coming in from Sanji and Sanji. manages to flicker out. There's the old. Ogwen gets caught by the tail end and they let go. The most crucial sacrificial play from Sanford. TOPH secures that Lord, but Falcons AP Brent, five members are still here. No potential split push play. Falcons AP Brent, they know that they have to defend first. Jose, the best offense for them is defense. Jose, I gotta say, man, look at all the battle spells. 40 doesn't have one, 40's not even on the map. Sanji doesn't have one. It's a minute and a half before that goes off of cooldown. And look at F cap. Ogwen's waiting about 20 seconds. 26 seconds to be exact. And the rest of the members of Falcons AP Brent all Wait. intact with their kits. And now they're trying to attempt a fast clear of the Lord here. Whew. Can they? Look, Lord I, standing. I think they can, they can, they it's can. It's 40k, it's 40k HP. Okay, Glorious Pathway will be casted here. TLPH as much as possible, trying to delay that the Lord will be bursted down, but here comes Falcon's AP Brent. They're revitalized by JP, pushing back the rest of FCAP. And they stand their ground, and they're still going. The immortality is keeping him alive. He's burning, and he's going to be calling back. Lord, alive. barely standing, barely taken out, just like that. And now the lead gone. T O P H fought hard for that Lord, and now it's gone. And all throughout that sequence, Kyle Cezy was working on the bottom lane, making sure that T O P H. Won't have any access for a potential backdoor play. Won't have any access to their precious buffs. That tier one down bottom reminds me of Rockheart. <laughs> still standing. It's still, still, still here. Since, since the very first second of this game, Rockheart is still here. It's still here. A 30 minutes in, tier one down bottom, it's still here. Leo just please translate, but in Filipino, since season one, got Rockheart. <laughs> He's been here since forever and Kyle TZ made sure to take care of that. And Ingan, I gotta tell you, I think that is a master stroke. It's a stroke of genius yeah. from Kyle TZ because no matter what TLPH do, no matter how risky they play, they always have to think the map is not on our side. Yeah. And again, credits also to Owen for making sure that they get the pick off. Because honestly, that was lost cost for Falcons AP Brent prior to Carl TZ securing the Lord. But with the kill on to Sanford and with the death timers reaching up to 60 seconds, they weren't able to utilize that Lord. Wow. And okay, battle spells are ready for Falcons AP Brent. Okay. 24 seconds before the fourth Lord. Looks like it's still e it's an equal ball game aside from the bottom lane. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you, it's an equal ball game because. I'd say three out of five team fights, TLPH can win. Yeah. So the only real thing that FCAP are playing off of is the macro game. Macro game. Because the cavalry has figured out Ogwin. Yeah. They know exactly how to deal with Rogan and Yigo. Yeah, honestly, they're not scared of the flicker implosion play. As long as Sanji is not caught up in the implosion, they can always counter attack with the frigid glacier. And again, JP still has the glorious pathway. So at any given moment, they can go for a charge, go for a kill. 
But again, it's a chess match between the Titans. It's not just a matter of who has faster hands. It's a matter of who has a better play, who has a better macro gameplay right now as we approach the 30 minute mark, Leo. Oh my gosh. FCAP taking control of a majority of that Lord Pit. And that was close. That was close. Kyle TZ, that was close. Patience game. All right, so far, no battle spells spent, no ults. And the map is, I'd say, mostly red up top and down bottom, but that's it. Now, JP, spotted here by Marco. Let's go. No room for errors here. P purple for Carl. All right, see, it's still, still okay, pretty 50-50. Okay. And look at this, the Clash of Titans delivers. This game is officially the longest game of the season, beating Omega versus FCAP, 24 minutes game. FCAP again, every single time, Falcons AP Brent plays, Expect it to go to the late game. They put on a show. They put on a show. They're here for the people. In the MPL area, they're here for the people all around the world. That's why they're called the Titans of MLBB. And I'm sure the fans are loving what they're seeing now. 31 minutes in, the kill scoreboard hasn't moved. Nothing has moved. No one's making a move. Everyone's displaying patience from these two Titans. Whoa, 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 look at this. Huge rotation. I don't think JP knows that there's five members of FCAP in the vicinity. They could actually go for him. It doesn't matter, he has a revitalized and... Immortality. A glorious pathway and an immortality. Sanford juggling here with the blade armor. And okay. now, gets caught up by one. And the Earth Shatter, looking for it. The revitalized has been used and nothing! JP stands tall! Nothing! And just like that, 16, 21, 32 minutes in. Yeah. Fourth Lord still here. Uh, again, at this point, the veterancy will come into play. The maturity will come into play. Across the board. Yes, and, and most importantly, the mental fortitude of both of these teams. The physical endurance. The phys Yes, the physical endurance. Y'all ever played a 30 minute game of ML? <laughs> Try doing it with millions watching. <laughs> doing anything at 30 minutes is already exhausting regardless of what you're doing. Talking about cardio, huh? <laughs> I hate cardio. I hate cardio. But I love MLBB. I love these two teams playing. They I can love go the Titans. for a best of five, a best of seven, anywhere around the world. And best believe I will be there. Flapped easy. Once again, check and range with JP off camera. Again, okay. it's the same duo. Ogwin and Kyle. Kyle and Ogwin. Are we going to see the same thing from Carl? Like, he's just trying to assassinate. They go away in a minute. Whoa! Doors back is already committed here. Forcing out a flicker from few. Okay. Major resource spent. Flap, flap. Easy with the onward and the earth shatter combo. Super Marco making sure that he doesn't overcommit. And we're back in neutral. But the best part is for T for Falcons AP Bren, there's a huge, huge minion this wave there. Fat wave. Fat wave up top. And the best part is the Glorious Pathway was expended in exchange for Fuse Flicker. So All Falcons right. AP Brand poised to get this Lord. Let's see which goes off a cooldown first. JP just keeping tabs, watching all five members of FCAP trying to burst down this Lord. Lord currently at half health. At this point, you can't uh, hold this Lord uh, for this long because eventually it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. True damage every single second. And now Sanford! And now answered back! I'm offended with the Glorious Pathway. Oh, still alive. So I'm enforced by Marco. TLPH played with range, times out the massive oats. Kyle! Now Kyle DZ trying to jump in on Asanji, the answer, the winter crown. No one falls. But the question is, will Falcons AP Brand burst down this Lord? I mean, looking at the map, the minions, they have control. It's a hard reset, and It's a hard reset. Another hard reset. Two members of Falcons AP Brand forced to uh, TP back to regenerate. And again, nothing's happening. Stalemate, 34 minutes in. It's like I'm in Madison Square Garden Yo. with the Bulls and the Lakers going 200 apiece in triple overtime. Honestly, 12 minutes away from having a full-length NBA game. That's how long this game is right now. And you can still see the crowd from Green Sun Hotel. The two sides, but Flap Easy goes in. There it is, the answer to the Primal Wrath, to the Earth Shatter. JP dealing a lot of damage. And there's the old Paisaji. Look at Kyle from the back. Kyle easy play with range. JP popped by Marco. That's a member down for TLPH, the first in minutes. Oh no, oh, TLPH. I think they still have to contest here. 
75 minutes before JP, before Daddy JP comes back. They're down by numbers, they're down on the map. And look at Kyle, he's going to force the inevitable. How does DLPH clear the waves fast enough while keeping tabs on the Lord? Someone needs to deal with Kyle Teasy, and it looks like it's going to be Carl Teasy. We might see a 1v1 Whoa. between the two junglers. And there it is, Tempest of Blade spent up already. And Kyle Teasy pops Carl's immortality. And with the help of Marco and Few, take down the young goat. That's three members down. TLPH can't even think of going for the Lord as FCAP scores the fourth one. And they're just delaying the inevitable. I think they don't even have to wait for the Lord. It's just for formality after numerous series. It looks like Falcons AP Bren will get another win onto TOPH. 35 minutes in, waves through top. Mid and bottom, and I'm offended from Sanford and the old from Sanji. The tap is a blade from Kyle. This is going to be a sweep from Falcons AP Brand.